when I began streaming this music, I was mind blown. All you know, I you know, for me, music is business as usual. It's not a big deal. I play the damn guitar, and that's it. But I forget that like people that aren't musicians truly, truly appreciate it. It's like warming your hands by the fire. You're listening to the Corbett Report. Welcome, friends. James Corbett here, CorbettReport.com, in a conversation that is being recorded on the 31st day of March 2020. And I think something that most of us can agree on is that we are all in a state of anxiety. Some people are anxious about catching viruses. Other people are anxious about catching tyranny, which is coming as a result of the fear and panic that's going on right now. Everyone is being put into a fear state billions of people being locked inside their homes. Uh, This is a mass psychological experiment that's going on, and unfortunately, if this is a war on an invisible enemy, or perhaps the visible enemy of the tyrants, it is a war of attrition. This is not something that's going to go away in a day, or a week, or even a month. This is going to last a very long time, and I fear a lot of people are going to get burnt out very quickly investing all of their fears and anxieties and basically driving themselves into an early grave out of a sheer state of panic or concern or or fretting and uh, dwelling on the negative energies. Which is why today I want to concentrate on the flip side of that. What we can do to maintain some sanity and perhaps reconnect with our humanity, which is the only thing that could possibly get us through this. What am I talking about? I'm talking about a new video series that our good friend Vinny Caggiano, aka Vincognito, is doing right now. He's uh, live streaming it on Facebook, he's posting it to YouTube and other normie platforms where people need some positivity and love and compassion. And that is what Vinny is doing. As I'm sure you all know by now, because you are avid Corporate Report followers, Vinny Caggiano is a musician a music theorist, a composer, a teacher, and uh, someone who, uh, well, has spent his life immersed in music and is currently my guitar teacher. So any progress I've made in the past two years is all thanks to Vinny, and any defects I have in my playing is all my own fault. (laughs) But Vinny, thank you so much for joining us again on the program today. Of course, it's a great pleasure. It's a great pleasure. Yeah, uh, it is a great pleasure, and let's put the emphasis on the word pleasure, because as I say... Everyone is in a fear state right now. Everyone is focusing on the negative, and understandably so. These are very troubling and worrying times, but if we forget our humanity, and if we forget how to connect with that, we are going to lose the most important thing we have, which is why I want to bring attention to this new video series that you're doing. It's called the Love is Contagious live stream home concert co-video series, and it is essentially a series of performances that you are doing not out there on the boardwalk, not not out there in the sunshine, but of course, like so many other people, self-isolating in your uh, lockdown apartment in, mm-hmm. uh, in California. So let's talk a little bit about why you were doing this. What is the point of what you're doing right now? Yeah, that, you know, as soon as we started to really feel us being clamped in, I got in touch. I immediately got in touch with a buddy of mine who runs a radio show right out of Venice called uh, Radio Venice. And uh, he, uh, you know, I've had this urgent feeling like we have to get live performance and music out to people as a kind of comfort and also an inspiration. Um, And uh, right after that, he told me, oh, I'm going to add two more days to it. And we're going to and they did a great, great show just the other day. It was wonderful, like all done on Zoom. So everybody was, you know, in their isolated places. Normally they gather there, but, you know, whatever. And then I was inspired to start playing. And, uh, you know, <laughs> some of this reminds me of I had a I had an old hippie buddy that uh, kind of bragged that he was Timothy, one of Tim, Timothy Leary's acid guys. Right. And. Uh, he, he bragged to me that, well, I was there in San Francisco when the CIA was handing out the acid, right? And I'm so reminded of that moment that uh, the whole thing backfired on the CIA. I, it really did because everybody started saying, why do we need this society? Let's start our own, you know? Of course it failed, but, you know, I'm sure they had a lot to do with that uh, failure. Uh, you know, they probably stepped in and changed things. 
<laughs> Point being, though, that Facebook, you and I know, is just a data collecting service for the NSA. Um, and it seems to me that that is turning around just like the whole asset thing, because the more I feel the more isolated we've all become, the more like spiritual connection we have to each other. And when I began streaming this music, I was mind blown. All you know, I you know, for me, music is business as usual. It's not a big deal. I play the damn guitar and that's it. But I forget that like people that aren't musicians truly, truly appreciate it. It's like warming your hands by the fire, you know. Um, so the response I got was ridiculous. I was getting all sorts of tips in my PayPal account and stuff like that, which was really helpful because things are bad, you know, financially. So, yeah. Uh, so I was basically moved by it. yeah. And you know, the weird thing is, you know, when you're when you're live streaming on Facebook, it's kind of like you see your own image in a little chat window. Uh, if you're sitting far enough from the camera, you can't really see who's there or whatever, but you could feel them, you know, and that was my experience. So my, my intention, my purpose is to bring joy to people. Most of my Facebook po posts are either funny or musical. That's about it. On occasion, I'll, I'll post a James Corbett video to which I get a whole bunch of flack. I had to remove two friends who called me an Alex Jones lover the other day, you know saying yeah. I was spreading dangerous information because these scientists were, were like arguing about this big panic saying you don't need to panic, you know? Well, you know, actually, you see, that's that's part of, I think, the point, or I, I don't want to put words in your mouth, but that seems to me the part of the point of what you're doing is that, yeah, this information, when I present it in my way, is only going to go so far and with so many people because a lot of people mm -hmm. have their blinders up and will never want to cross that boundary into mm -hmm. the conspiratorial. Yeah. But everyone, well, no, not everyone, almost everyone in the planet can appreciate music and the intention behind it and the energy behind it and what what ultimately is the, the creative act being modeled for people. I think there's a lot of valuable things that are embedded in just the act of creating music for people. And I, I assume that's why you call this love is contagious, but perhaps you can expand on that. Yeah, uh, exactly. Um, first of all, music is such a conveyor of this love. I used to say, I mean, I'm, I'm a bit of a mystic, and I used to say that every note I play is actually the energy behind it is God speaking through me, through my notes, you know. Um, but, you know, I'll give you a prime example. Have you ever heard of the organization called Playing for Change? No. If you have not, you should totally check them out. And I guarantee you, you've probably seen one of your videos without knowing the name of the organization. Uh, I, w I had the honor of being on, on one of their um, uh, uh, performances. And basically what he did, does is now you start to ring a bell. I think I have seen what that he, now that you say it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he does. What he does is he'll take a basic track and I'll have the performer put on headphones and they jam over the track. But then he goes around the world and has all these musicians playing together. And uh, so I posted that one last week and, you know, it's always a big, you know, hit and people love it. Lots of likes and all. Um, but, you know, the other day I decided to watch in its entirety um, the song The Weight. OK, the 60s uh, song by the band is a great, great song. And literally, James, it was so soulful and so beautiful. Tears streamed from my eyes watching it. It, and tears of, of like pure love and pure joy, like this is human soul right here. This is what we need to, to experience all together, that we all share in this soul. We all have it. It's just that non-musicians reson resonate through the music itself to it, you know, sympathetic vibration. Well, here's my take on this, because I'm not a particularly mystical or hippy-dippy kind of guy, so I don't... I don't know if I come at it from that perspective, but here's what I love mm -hmm. about this idea, is that this is modeling the act of creation and sharing, which is, I think, two things that we desperately need to maintain our connection with in this time as we get locked down and self-isolated and made more and more into basically automatons who are going to be told what to do and when to do it and how to do it, and you will go out and applaud at 8 p.m., and you will do this, you will stay in your house, you will live this regimented lifestyle. We have to, once again, reconnect with our humanity and our ability to create and to connect with other people through that humanity, that is that is important. 
And for other people in the crowd who may not be so mystically inclined, this is an important part of human nature. And I also want to stress, I don't think this is about music only and, 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 and solely. I think a lot of people out there have different talents and abilities and things that they have haven't had time to explore or have repressed for a long time, this is a good time to be bringing that out in whatever way you can, whether it's music or whatever other type of creative activity you can engage in. Because again, I think this is going to be extremely important for what kind of humanity is emerging on the other side of this global transformative event. And if we are regimented into automata, who are just robots doing what we are told, then that is the end of humanity. What do you think about that take? Well, first of all, um, I, you know, I, I am kind of hippy dippy and I am spiritual. And uh, um, I have to say that I, I don't want to have a, a false sense of positivity about the future, but I keep getting the feeling that they're pushing this too fast and too hard and if they try to isolate us for like three months or something like this, there's going to be a pushback. And it's going to be a serious pushback, especially here in America, because we're spoiled. We like all of our junk, you know, when we're held back from that. There's going to be something. And, and, and the thing is, too, it's not just pushback in the, say, in the way of saying, I don't know, emailing your congressman or whatever like this. But uh but also, again, back to the spiritual, it's a spiritual pushback. One thing I've said is that while there are some like meditation groups that are praying for humanity to get through this, probably with the wrong aim in mind, like, you know, they're worried about the virus and not the consequences of the political consequences of the virus, which you and I see really clearly. And it's very frightening to see. Um but I believe that deep inside, I, I have a saying, James, you can't compress the human soul. The more they squeeze in and squeeze in and squeeze in, the thing is going to frickin' explode in the opposite direction. And this is where I think these guys totally lack wisdom. I always say they have no Zen, you know. Um, so what I've been thinking is that although there are people like consciously sitting down to pray in groups and stuff like that, I'm saying the prayer already exists and you don't have to do anything. Each one of us deep inside is saying over with this already. And that energy is going out into the, you know, the ether. And that is my hope. One, that they're making a huge mistake. They're pushing too hard and too fast. And two, that there will be a pushback on some level or the other, you know. Yeah. Yeah, very, very insightful uh, observation, actually, because I, I use the phrase hippy dippy sort of ironically. I'm not I, that's a very denigrative uh, language like, oh, those silly hippy dippy. But I, I'm, I'm not using it in that sense because it, mm -hmm. it, I'm just describing the way that I experience my reality. And I know other people experience it differently. And I'm glad that, that there are many different people who have different perceptions. And mm -hmm. I think that it, I think you're right about that. The people who are trying to push this, the powers that shouldn't be, the elitists, are very cold and rational psychopaths, essentially, who are very good at calculating plans and making schemes and rational, you know, doing calculations. But that leaves out the human element that I think things like Love is Contagious reconnects us to. That is that element that doesn't quite factor into their equations and really can be the thing that explodes out in a way they never expect. That really is uh, one of the things that I think could come of this, depending, again, upon what we make of it, which is why, again, I'm glad to see people modeling the act of creation and spreading something other than fear and, and hatred and dissent and all of these other emotions that are bubbling to the surface right now, which is why I'm glad to see what you're doing and why I hope other people will not just accept this or not just to passively uh, take it in, but also try to, to do it in their own way. And again, Everyone has different things that they're into, but I, I want to see this more more of a, a phenomenon taking off rather than going out onto the balcony and applauding dutifully. How about people engage in creative mm -hmm. work that can actually reach other people in meaningful ways? Uh, that's, mm -hmm. that's an idea that deserves to be spread. Um, so I'm glad you were attempting to do that. Um, I am going to, of course, link up the Love is Contagious video series that you're doing. 
And also, we're going to lead out today's conversation. We're going to um, play one of your songs. I'm leaning towards I Will Survive. What do you think? <laughs> that was intentional. The one with I play with uh, Matt, the sax player? Yeah. Uh, yeah, that was a lot of fun. And that there is an example right there. Us local musicians here in Venice immediately, like Matt's a recluse, man. He He's a great guy. I love him. He's like a brother. But he's a recluse. He's like me. He just kind of stays to himself and... And, uh, you know, when he saw my first uh, live stream, he called me up the next day and he said, Vinny, can I come over and, and do one with you? And I said, dude, awesome. You know, um, unfortunately, we my my laptop, my uh, desktop computer died about a month ago. And now my laptop is showing bad signs. So I'm, I can't do the live streams for a while until I get a replacement. Hopefully one with decent video quality. So I must apologize for the video and sound quality. It's what it is. But, you know, the heart and soul is there, and hopefully that, that shows through. Um, yeah. Um, yeah. So great. Right. great yeah. Well, then I, I have three calls to action for the Corporate Report audience because I think we can do something here. Number one, as you have pointed out before, uh, you, you don't have streaming abilities on GooTube itself until you get 1,000 subscribers. Which you don't. You know have. what I found out? What's that? I found out that I can stream oh. as long as it's off of a computer. I can't oh, stream but off not of on the phone. Mobile. All right. Okay. Yeah. Well, then that goes to my second call for action. Uh, if there is anyone in Vinny's area there in Venice, California, or in the surrounding area that would be able to help him acquire uh, the computer that he would need in order to do some streaming, or at really? any rate, he does have he does guitar lessons by Skype. I can attest once again he is great at that. So if there's anyone out there who would like to do that, we'll put your email uh, contact information in the show notes for this, so people can get in touch with you and hopefully uh, start That's maybe start learning guitar. Why not? And then the third yeah. call for action that I would Perfect like to put time, out there right? to the Corbett Report audience is. I want to see other people modeling their creativity in whatever way that manifests. And so I would love to see the Corporate Report members posting their stuff. I know there are musicians in the Corporate Report community that do post mm -hmm. their, their music sometimes. I'd love to see that. And anything else, sp spontaneous, creative, from a position of love that people do, put it in the comments. You section. too. You too, James. Kodomo-san, you get it, right? Yeah, that's true. Uh, Kodomo-san.com, you're right. And uh, yeah, we have a backlog of songs and haven't gotten around to making videos for them yet. So <laughs> maybe we should just put out the songs. But anyway, <laughs> yeah, um, exactly right. So I, that's what I want people to do. Not just take this in, but also manifest it. That's the point of the contagion of love, that it will mm -hmm. manifest in other people and it will create a diff an, an effect that cannot be calculated by the would-be planners of society. I think mm -hmm. it's an important point to keep in mind. I think that's a very important point. I really do. I honestly do. And, you know, I want to say one more thing. As your audience probably knows by now, you and I are tremendous Beatles nerds, and we love the Beatles and all that. I have another saying, if I hadn't said it already, because God knows my memory is so bizarre lately. But I have a saying, limitation breeds creativity. And, you know, there's the old story of John and Paul taking a bus for 10 miles to learn a B7 chord. Now, when you're like tremendously inspired to, to be a musician and you learn that B7 chord, you travel 10 miles and 10 miles back to get it, what are you going to do? You're going to cash in on the value of that B7 chord. You're going to work really hard. Secondly, they loved American music and they had to tune in these old style radios. Radio Hamburg could hardly hear this American music that they play on some, you know, one hour of the night or whatever it was. But it's precise the limitations of the recording studios in those days, right? All those limitations made for this incredible flowering of music that they created. And I believe that, again, this is going to happen. Yeah, it's funny because I maybe you would know, I don't know, but what I would imagine that periods of economic boom are when artists thrive the most, you know? Mm. Um, but now we're mm. going to hit this. Well, I'm not sure. You know, they they have said that there's been people who've tried to correlate economic recessions to times of resurgence of rock music back in the day, or or you know darker music, and then periods of economic boom are pop driven. You know, bubblegum pop. Oh, makes that's interesting. Oh, that oh that's that's interesting. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So. 
So if anything good comes out of this, maybe we'll get some real music again instead of the manufactured pop crap. Oh, wait. Uh, whatever. Whatever kind of music people out there like. That's great. Um, also, yeah, on that note, yeah, we, we do Beatles conversations. People in my audience, I hope you know about this, but if not, head on over to Vinny's channel where we have now a series that we're doing about once a month. We are exploring different Beatles songs. And <laughs> if you happen to be a complete Beatle geek and a complete music theory nerd, <laughs> boy, have we got a, a series for you. <laughs> because we will generally spend an hour talking about a two-minute song and analyzing it to death. <laughs> so if that sounds like fun, head on over to his channel. We have another one in the works, but me and Brock are so swamped right now, we haven't gotten it uh, edited yet. Mm -hmm. We'll get it out. Well, there. you know, uh, back in when you first when you first kind of connected with me, it was Truth Music 2017, was it? That sounds about right, yeah. All right, so back then, you 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 mentioned to your audience, well, I, I'm addicted to Vinny's videos, you know, I, I, I can't stop watching them, which I loved, you know, but... Uh, you didn't know that much about music theory back then, and and you still found it interesting somehow. You know, uh, I, I think when I think a lot of people get that way when they see people talking about the structure of how it all came together and and that sort of thing. I think they kind of appreciate that. I I think so too, and I I uh, we certainly don't try to dumb it down. So I think that's also a good thing because I personally dislike when people try to dumb things down and make it too simple. No, I want to hear what what really is going on and maybe i won't get it all but i'll at least under i'll be able to find my way through it so anyway it is <laughs> pretty hardcore in-depth conversations but people can check it out if it's your cup of tea man are you going to enjoy that series <laughs> and, and you know we will we work well together too i, I think, think it's so. just talk talk about see talk about that love the connection through love like we both love the beatles the two of us love the beatles so what happens boom all this because you, know, you put your love for the Beatles out on YouTube, I found you, and now we're now we're friends, and and you're yeah, my teacher, yeah. and it's yeah, the world works in mysterious ways. Anyway, I'm glad you're out there modeling this for people, showing that love is contagious. Such an important message right now. There's a lot of doom, there's a lot of gloom, and don't worry, guys, I'll be covering it day in, day out, day after day after day. But we all need a space for positivity, creativity, love. And I can tell you, Vinny, I am playing your your music while I'm busy working and answering emails and doing things. So oh, your music awesome. is working its way into my work as well. So Oh, that's wonderful. Have you heard my me my version of Play That Funky Music White Boy? That's a hoot. <laughs> I haven't yeah. yet. I just I will. <laughs> I just uploaded a few today. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Well, anyway, we will leave with I Will Survive, an appropriate song, I think, for today. And uh, I hope people will check out your channel and what you're doing. As I say, your contact info will be in the show notes if people are looking for a music teacher or perhaps to help hook you up with a computer or something. Anyway, uh, we'll leave the conversation there. But uh, Vinny, thank you so much for doing what you do. And thank you. I think this was a timely, uh, timely podcast. I think it's important. <laughs>